Well, we're gonna I'm have to settle this dispute in court. The food court. Chicken wings, french fries, and scandals? Who knew Hootie the Owl was actually hiding a few skeletons in the restaurant's closet? Here are 10 lawsuits Hooters doesn't want you to know about. Improper compensation. Not good enough. Tips are the lifeblood of the serving industry. Many people are able to make ends meet due to the cash flow that runs through restaurants all over the country. This makes it an attractive opportunity for everyone from the young and old, full-timers and part-timers. What servers won't stand for is an already archaic system being exploited by their employers. Such was the case for a Lafayette, Indiana Hooters, which was creating an increasingly unfair pay scale for their employees. Waitresses complained that they were being asked to do many activities outside of their responsibilities, such as washing dishes, hosting, and other jobs outside their scope of work. Shame on you. All this was happening while the waitresses were only being paid a little more than $2 an hour. The general rule is that if waitresses or serving staff of any kind are asked to do tasks outside of their boundaries, that their compensation should reflect that. Unfortunately, this was not the case for the local Hooters restaurant. Litigation was pursued and Hooters was accused of being in clear violation of the Fair Labor Standards Act. It's unclear how this case ended up as the two attorneys filing the lawsuit declined to comment shortly shortly after the story went public. Regardless of the outcome, it brought a ton of bad publicity for the restaurant chain. If you want good service, you have to take care of those that serve you. Discriminatory Hiring Practices Unacceptable! While it's true that Hooters comes with a sort of assumption that your servers will be women, that doesn't necessarily mean that men should be barred from working there, right? Well, Hooters had something to say about that. In 1997, when a group of men applied for positions at a Chicago area location, they were subsequently turned away for the only reason Hooters thought they needed. They were male. The famous restaurant thought nothing of it until the men turned around and accused Hooters of gender discrimination. There were three men in total and they each took home the sum of $19,000. That should be the end of it, right? Yeah, that's what you wish, Steve. It turns out that in 2015, the exact same thing would happen in Texas. Another man brought up a case of gender bias and was once again rewarded out of court with an undisclosed settlement. While in this case it may seem amusing to some, gender discrimination is not a joke in the workplace. Although it's spoken about a lot more today, it would seem that Hooters was one of the first to be caught utilizing this discriminatory practice. Sued for weight bias. Are you body shaming us? In 2010, more scandals were laid on the doorsteps of this beer and wings behemoth. Only this time, it would be a case of weight discrimination that would plague the famous chain. It turns out that the woman bringing this claim testified to being placed on a probation period in which she was told that she must lose weight. If she wouldn't or couldn't, she'd be fired. What? what? While this is another case of the settlement being undisclosed, it is hard to believe that the woman didn't see any compensation. Inside the case files, the attorneys claimed that Hooters created a workplace that was hostile and downright offensive. It's true that the chain is trying to create a certain aesthetic with their atmosphere and wait staff, and there's nothing wrong with that. What is wrong is enforcing these rules and protocols until they become downright discriminatory. Hooters once again saw terrible optics for this entire debacle, rightly so, as as once again, common workplace standards were not observed. Video recording lawsuit. Say hi, mommy. Say hi to Rocco and Rocco. Say hi. Hi, fellas. <laughs> well, if you thought it couldn't get any worse for Hooters, you clearly don't know where this video is going. The scandals would just keep on coming. When in 2004, multiple employees of a California outlet brought a suit against the company that claimed they had been videotaped while dressing for work. According to a major news company, it was found that a manager of the store was in possession of nearly 200 illegally obtained videos of the waitresses. When the tsunami of press came down upon the restaurant, it was found that nearly 40 women joined the case against Hooters. The manager in question, who had placed the videotaping device, faced allegations of civil battery before criminal charges were brought. The nature of these crimes and the outcome of the courts aren't readily available, but public records of the transcripts exist for those curious. Hooters was once again caught in the crossfire, and many questioned how someone like this would be employed by the company. How is that even possible? I don't know. Nothing makes sense anymore. Not only that, but the sheer amount of negligence it would take for it to continue as long as it did. Hooters would once again fall from grace in the public eye as the cases continued to stack up against them. 
more weight discrimination. He thinks I'm pregnant. That is an insult when the person doesn't look it. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, and maybe people should start to find a new place to grab wings and beer. Coming to us from Michigan is another case against Hooters that claims weight discrimination. Again and again and again. This is a more recent allegation, taking place just a few years ago in 2019. A waitress from a local store was told that her weight of just over 130 pounds was not an acceptable standard for the chain. This ultimately led to the weight discrimination lawsuit being filed as the waitress told sources that she had never received anything but positive reviews from customers and colleagues alike. This would apparently come into stark contrast with the way that the waitress claimed to be treated by the management. It said that the waitress felt demoralized and embarrassed by comments from her superiors. This recent case has sparked renewed interest in weight discrimination in the workforce, and some are even asking, how much say should an employer have on their workforce's physique? In this particular case, Hooters would once again settle out of court and pay their former employee serious compensation. It would seem that when crafting their image of what a restaurant should be, Hooters time and time again refuses to look at the workplace culture they're promoting, and they end up in court. Toxic Chemical Lawsuit Poison! One thing that Hooters has always seemingly done right is have a firm grasp on the food and drink that their customers like. They're a no-frills sports bar who cater to mostly men and, in turn, serve a lot of alcohol. Most of this alcohol comes in the form of beer. In Mishawaka, Indiana, a man was visiting a Hooters location there for lunch, and with his meal, he ordered a beer. Instead of the beer, he was served a glass of toxic chemical cleaning fluid that was still in the restaurant's draft beer lines. You had one, Joe. Just the one. Upon ingestion of the chemicals, the man's throat immediately began to close up and his mouth began to burn. The staff at the store quickly rushed to give the man a glass of water, not knowing that the ingestion of water along with the chemicals would cause an even stronger reaction. Not only did the staff deliver harm in the form of help, but no one thought to call an ambulance, making an already volatile situation worse. The man would eventually make it to a hospital, but not before severe damage was done. All things considered, this was enough for an attorney to file suit against the chain, claiming that the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA for short, guidelines were not met, and Hooters was in clear violation. When you account for the fact that the staff were less than helpful, it seemed like a slam dunk case. The Lockwood Legal Group, who represented the victim, have not made comments on the outcome of litigation, but we think it would be safe to assume that their client received quite the compensation offer. I mean, you can't really blame Hooters, though. Not serving our friends toxic chemicals is the hardest part of our day, too. We're, of course, just joking. While this is the only known case for Hooters restaurants, this isn't the only time a dining establishment has served their patrons something inedible. Maybe we'll just eat our meals at home from now on. Sexual harassment in the workplace. Everybody stop undressing. We just had harassment training. Sexual harassment is about the most heinous infraction that a company can make. And if you thought that Hooters' long line of lawsuits couldn't get any worse, you're sad mistaken. Not even close. Not even close. At the turn of the century, a federal judge ordered the Hooters restaurant chain to pay $275,000 to a former waitress who claimed that she was sexually harassed in the workplace. The harassment against this waitress would happen between 1996 and 1997 at a location in Newport, California. None of these allegations were leveled at the clientele of the establishment and instead pointed directly at the management. It turned Turns out that waitresses were forced outside of their comfort zones by managers of the store and subjected to demeaning and belittling behavior. It wouldn't take long for other waitresses to step forward, and before long, the entire protocol of the store was brought into question as overwhelming evidence like the training manual and instructional videos were brought forth. The management's behavior would turn out to be gross violations of workplace conduct, and one of the largest sums that the company had ever paid out was given to the waitresses' effect. While it was terrible that it had to happen, this was one of the biggest wake-up calls that the chain would ever get, and how the company reacted could change how they were perceived in the public's eyes for years to come. Racial Discrimination Lawsuit I not use N-word. Oh, the other N-word. No? 
This next lawsuit was filed in Baltimore in August of 2013. Farron Johnson claims that she was fired from the local Hooters chain because of the company's policy stating Hooters prohibits African-American girls from wearing blonde highlights in their hair. This came as a shock to Farron, who was nothing if not a great worker and excellent with her customer service. Farron said that at first her shifts were just reduced, but before too long, they chose to replace her. No! Just come on. No! The restaurant manager took most of the heat, as their comments about the, quote, natural look of African-American hair were found to be downright discriminatory. Johnson was naturally confused and upset about the situation, and it didn't take long for her to hire a civil rights lawyer. Edmund D. Cook would write in his case that Hooters violated state and federal civic rights laws, and that their hair policy was put into place simply to discriminate against people like Farron Johnson. The court handed down the verdict that Hooters would pay Farron $250,000 for lost wages and legal fees. This was a massive victory in a civil rights respect and brought about another round of terrible publicity for the Hooters restaurant chain, who seemed to be basking in infamy at this point. The Toyota Lawsuit No more lies! Another lawsuit that comes to us from around the year 2000, this time from Panama City Beach, Florida. The local Hooters outlet decided to run a contest for its staff and see who could sell the most beer as part of a promotional contest by the chain. One waitress by the name of Jody Berry was a contender, as her and the names of two other waitresses in the area were put into a raffle to see who would become the owner of a reputable prize, a brand new car from Toyota. Jody would go on to win the draw and the time for her prize to be delivered finally came. Jody was led blindfolded into the parking lot of her store where her true prize was revealed. Instead of a brand new car, Jody was rewarded with a plastic Toyota doll from the popular movie franchise Star Wars. What? Jody was furious. It's said that she stormed back into the store where her manager was just laughing. Jody didn't find this very funny and instead quit the store a week later. She was convinced that the restaurant shouldn't be able to treat their employees like this, and she was right. A lawsuit was once again brought against the franchise and restaurant chain, alleging that this was false advertisement and fraudulent misinterpretation. This is all made much worse as evidence eventually came to light that the store manager might have known that the Toyota was a ploy all along. Certain elements to the case will probably forever be shrouded in mystery. One thing that is certain is that Jody was awarded massive compensation for the ordeal. It was said that originally she just wanted to be awarded the sum of a new Toyota, but we'd be willing to bet that her lawyers got her much more than that. It seems like Hooters has true problems differentiating between solid and unsavory business practices, and the millions of dollars that they've paid out in lawsuits over the years are a true testament to that. Here's hoping that one day Hooters can rise to the paradigm of what a sports bar should be. But until then, no one will be holding their breath. Avoiding lawsuits. You take one swing at me, I will sue you for all your worth. Hooters has been under a lot of heat and has had to settle more than a few discrimination lawsuits concerning their hiring process. However, their company seems to rely on a loophole they use to hire servers without getting into any further legal hot water. Are you sneaky? Hooters servers are not your average waitresses. You've probably wondered, how do they get hired? Do they hold auditions? How do they even advertise for job openings? What you might not know is that when Hooters servers are hired, they're classified as entertainers. The company explained that the essence of their business is the Hooters girl and the experience that she offers the customers. They hold auditions for their roles, and once the girls are hired, they're expected to keep a glamorous appeal, dance and sing, offering Hooters customers a unique experience. This gives the company plenty of legal leeway when hiring their servers slash entertainers. I see what you did there. Good one. <laughs>